The military's top secret weapon, Project Shadow, was stolen from the military base located on the deserted island in the southern seas. This incident increased worldwide terrorist activities. Sonic the Hedgehog was arrested. What? The adventure for truth leads to the incidents that shock the entire world. The story takes our hero Sonic from the Earth and into outer space. Sonic Adventure 2, Hero Side Story. Farewell, Sonic. Forever. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Sonic Adventure 2 on the Sega Dreamcast. I am one well sheep yet again, and this, ladies and gentlemen, is what many consider to be the greatest 3D Sonic game of all time. And like I said previously in my Sonic Adventure 1 LP, that is my particular favorite 3D Sonic game. This is definitely a top standout title that I would recommend to anyone else. And uh, this one's split up into two different actual story modes, ladies and gentlemen. We can play as either the heroes that we all know and love, Sonic, Knuckles, and Tails, or we can play as Dr. Eggman, Rouge the Bat, which is a new character, and Shadow the Hedgehog. But without any further ado, let's just go into the main game itself, shall we? Sigma Alpha 2 heading due south over the city. We're en route, everything's a go. This is Control Tower. We have you on radar. Report cargo status of captured hedgehog aboard. Over. That's a 10 4. Cargo secured on board and. What? The it hedgehog is it. Over. gone. He's taking out everyone aboard and. What's wrong? What in the Come world? Here. Well, that is one way to start off a game. Yes, Sonic the Hedgehog actually got arrested this time, ladies and gentlemen, and the reason why, well, we're going to be seeing that reason why a bit later down the line. But this is our introductory level, City Escape. It's a bit different from the usual introduction levels we expect from Sonic, because normally we're in a Green Hill environment or a beach environment or something to that nature. But this time around, we just start off and we're in the middle of a city that we do need to escape from. And in the background, the music, Escape from the City, is one of my absolute favorite soundtracks in all of Sonic. I love the music in this game. The music is definitely 10 out of 10. And while I prefer the variety of the original Sonic Adventure, I still really do love this soundtrack. And some of the tracks, I just I just consider to be some of the tracks, best tracks in the entire franchise. But anyway, in terms of Sonic, he has his general movement abilities from the original Sonic Adventure still intact. He still has the jumping homing attack ability. He still has the spin dash ability, although that's been nerfed quite a little bit now. So instead of an instantaneous charge up and go, you have to hold down the button for an extra second or two in order to re get yourself ready to rev up. And we can also jump off these pads by pushing the A button. This is a new ability, by the way. And new to Sonic's arsenal is the ability to actually perform a somersault technique. Now, if you tap quickly the X button or the B button, you will actually curl up into a ball and you can break plenty and plenty of boxes and whatnot in the environment. And we're going to be making use of that quite a bit during the course of this playthrough. And newly ad added to the Sonic franchise is the grinding ability. And we're going to see grinding quite a great deal throughout the course of the franchise past this point. Grinding is definitely something that has become a staple of the Sonic the Hedgehog series, you know, ladies and gentlemen. And to celebrate Sonic's brand new grinding power, he does actually have a new set of boots on his body, the new soap shoes, which um, originally this game didn't have these soap shoes. Originally he was going to use the original Sonic the Hedgehog standard shoes that we know and love. However, Sega had a deal going with the shoe company Soap at the time the re at the time this game came out, so that's why Sonic has brand new boots to, you know, to accent that. 
although the, if you saw in the original cutscene of the game, Sonic's um, normal boots were still in the game files. He still wore those normal boots at the beginning. But uh, he gets rid of them in favor of these grind boots, which basically pop in from existence. I don't know why, but hey, well, there you go. It gives us a new ability to grind, and I can dig that because it is really fine and dandy. Oh god, there's a truck! You gotta go fast! You gotta speed up! Oh no! Also, pay attention to the right side of the road by here, ladies and gentlemen, because you will probably be able to see Big the Cat running. This game has a lot of cameos in regards to Big the Cat, specifically in the Dreamcast and HD versions. In the GameCube version, these uh, these cameos aren't available, but, you know, every now and then you can sometimes see Big the Cat in each of these zones, which I do appreciate, I really do love. And uh, as you can probably guess, all the hub worlds, all the adventure fields from the original Sonic Adventure, they are nowhere to be seen. There, you just go from level to level like a classic Sonic game, which I both kind of like and I dislike at the same time, because obviously you lose out on the exploration, you, you lose out on the adventure part of Sonic Adventure if you get my drift. But, you know, you can still run around, you can still go fast, cool. and uh, it allows you to get from point A to point B and go through the story much quicker, which I do like, you know, ladies and gentlemen. What can I tell you? This game of tag is boring. I'm out of here. Hmm. Finally decided to show up, eh? Okay. Bring it Water on! Roger Bigfoot reporting to headquarters. The trigger has been located. Copy that. And there we are, ladies and gentlemen. Now it's time for the very first boss battle again against Big Foot. Now this boss battle is a boss we're going to probably see quite a bit during the franchise, even though he's not only really a boss fight in this particular Sonic game. This this mech appears like later on in this game as well as in an upcoming game, Shadow the Hedgehog, which we'll be tackling quite a bit later on. But uh, yeah, basically what I advise is to jump on all the crates and then jump into his cockpit whenever he's available. He's going to run around the arena, he's going to start shooting his Vulcan cannon into the ground, and this is a good time to sort of get a good vantage point to boop him in the head. It's quite an easy boss battle, quite easy to take down, and I do love it. What can I tell ya? It's a nice way to get you introduced to the new controls, because the controls are, aren't as... Good as the original Sonic Adventure, in my opinion. What? It all starts with this. A duel containing the ultimate power. That's the Chaos Emerald! Now I know what's going on! The military has a sinking knee for the likes of you! Emerald is? I mean, if he doesn't know what the Master Emerald is, then d d his actions in this game are null and void. Why did he? Why did this game exist? These are the real questions that need to be answered. Doctor Eggman should know what that bloody gem is. So that's Doctor Eggman. Well, Not if I can help it. Look what you did to my emerald! I 
did that to prevent the master emeralds from being stolen, you idiot. If it's in pieces, I can restore it. And by the way, that's not your emeralds. Let me do it once I get back to the base. I despise anyone who takes jewels from me. All the world's gems are mine to keep. Yeah, we'll see about that, Batgirl. Oh, whoop de doo Knuckles the idiot yet again. Yes, the treasure hunting stages from the original Sonic Adventure return in full force in this particular one. And this is this gameplay style has been changed for the worse in my pro in professional opinion. Basically, as you can tell, the radar at the bottom of the screen is still there. Knuckles is gliding, climbing up walls, and punching abilities are still intact. However, as you can tell, the second and third emerald pieces on the radar are now blanked out. That is because we now um, have we the, 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 the words are failing me. We are now unable to collect. Well, we can still collect the second and third emerald pieces, but we are now unable to locate the second and third emerald pieces. We need to go through each of these zones and collect these things in the order that they want us to collect them, which is a bit of a pain in the ass. And many people who remember my original Sonic Adventure LP will recall that I said I really do not like the hunting stages in Sonic Adventure 2. I despise these. And uh, for the most part, you might be looking at this and say, okay, this isn't so bad. The stages aren't too big. Yeah, this stage isn't too big. This stage is fine. When we get way later down into the LP, I find the hunting levels to be stupidly, stupidly big and ridiculously painful to navigate, you know, ladies and gentlemen. The hunting stages are without a doubt the weakest aspect of Sonic Adventure 2, and uh, it's a shame because they could have really easily improved upon the original game, because I think, honestly, out of all the characters, I, th I think Knuckles in terms of general control, probably does control better than his uh, Sonic Adventure 1 counterpart. Even though all of the other characters of the game, I will openly say, ha don't control as well in my, you know, in my opinion, but that's beside the point. You know, the general rule of thumb is, go try and find the Master ammo pieces, which can be located in a number of randomized areas on each of the zone's maps. You know what I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen? And uh, one thing that may confuse a lot of people who grew up playing this on the GameCube or people playing this on the HD version currently, what you will notice is whenever I'm going near a Master Emerald piece, a red exclamation mark doesn't pop up on top of my head. That was an improvement made in the battle version of Sonic Adventure 2 and honestly, that improvement makes these hunting stages so much more bearable. The Dreamcast version is nowhere near as good as the battle version in terms of hunting stages just because of that one improvement and that one instance where... Because when... Just like in the original Sonic Adventure game, you can actually uh, dig into floors and walls and what have you. With that, you get a red exclamation mark that tells you, okay, something might be underneath the floor. Without it in this Dreamcast version, it can be quite a pain in the ass to find everything. And yeah, I don't like the hunting stages, but uh, I digress. Time to move on to our third gameplay style. And there we are, Tails rocking the brand new Tornado 3. We now have the ability to walk around in a mech form and shoot a Vulcan cannon shots by tapping the attack button. Doing a melee attack if we get close to whatever enemy we're attacking and pushing the attack button. And we can also lock on and target and attack enemies by using a lock on system. It's basically Gamma's gameplay, but refined in a way. Although I do prefer the, the how free Gamma feels. You know, these are pretty damn well made levels. What can I tell you? This time I'll let you go. 
But the next time we meet, you won't be so lucky. Wow, Tail! You did it! What are you doing here on this island? I'm the one who should be asking that question. Don't you know it's dangerous here? And don't worry, ladies and gentlemen, Amy is not playable. And also, to explain that boss fight, because I so completely glossed over it, just shoot him. That That's the only advice you're going to get off me. Just shoot him, and you will win. <laughs> and yes, you, a lot of you might actually be wondering, why is the voices so hard to hear? Why is the music so damn loud? And, uh... Don't blame me, I didn't touch the edit- I, well, obviously I edited this, but don't- I didn't touch the audio levels. This game has atrocious sound mixing, and it drives me mad whenever I'm playing the game, because sometimes I find myself struggling to hear the characters, and it makes me so thankful there's subtitles, but, uh, that's beside the point. I'll catch you all next time in, uh, Sonic Adventure 2, where we go and return with Tails yet again, and tackle his first proper stage, and get into the nitty-gritty of his, uh, his mechanics and whatnot. So, thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed. Don't be sheepish, and I'll catch you all then. Bye!